Thank you for joining Just Around the Corner with Dennis Mansfield. As John Hay, one of the most famous men of the 19th century, once said, all the great prizes in life are just around the corner. Let's go there together. Hello and welcome to Just Around the Corner with Dennis Mansfield, a podcast focused on culture, history, travel, and even a little entertainment from time to time. I hope you enjoy traveling with me and with my guests, clients, friends on each episode. Today's episode is entitled Women in Ag. Now, as a business coach, podcaster, and author, I invite you to subscribe to my newsletter by clicking on my website at DennisMansfield.com and hit the button that says subscribe. I think you'll like it. Welcome back to Just Around the Corner with Dennis Mansfield. I would love to introduce it, but, you know, in pre-planning here, I blew a few lines. So, Bridget Riedel, our guest... Bridget, take it away. Well, thank you, Dennis Manfield, my business coach, who does a tremendous job of not leading me astray with some of the wild and crazy ideas that I have. And one of those ideas was retiring from a job in crop protection in the ag industry after 25 years, becoming the owner of Lilac Lane Media and now ag director for WDAY Radio and the Flag Family Media in Fargo, North Dakota. Of all the three years of seasons that I have done this podcast, I've never had one of my guests introduce themselves. So that shows how much confidence I have in you and how much I had bubble lips and problems <laughs> with speaking as we were introducing here. But you know what, Bridget? It's an honor to have you on. Now, you, you do a show, and we talked about this uh, in the last episode, previous episode, on women in ag, uh, of, of doing an afternoon show with two King Kong guys who are meteorologists who just run rampant over everything and it's a chaotic, fun show full of laughter. Uh, so this introduction today of me and yourself must feel like being at home. Yes, actually it does. Um, but when I walk into my office, unlike when I walk into the radio office, nobody called me mom. So thank you for not doing that <laughs> because... Yes, I've kind of become the mother <laughs> to the weather office to keep everybody in line. <laughs> well, I, th I, I think with uh, the age discrepancy between me and the two King Kong guys, I'd have to call you sis. So, <laughs> so well, you know, we opened today's uh, podcast episode with a great deal of joy because we are hopeful and happy. We're full of future thinking. And while we're doing that, we're also cognizant of the reality that there is a an overwhelming sadness that has begun to creep through at different times in different places regarding mental health in the agriculture community. Walk us through that, won't you? Can I start with a quick story from my friend Sue? Sure. So Sue has always um, struggled in her family with mental illness. And unfortunately, she had a traumatic brain injury, a TBI. Mm. And so... That exacerbated what was going on with her depression and anxiety. And I was at her house one day. We were working on a project together. And she said, you know, the other day, uh, and she also worked in the ag industry. <clears throat> she said, the other day I was stopped at a railroad crossing and a train was going past. And I thought about just driving into it. And that was the point where I realized I didn't recognize the signs in my mm. friend. And I needed to do better. Now, she's a dairy farmer's daughter like I am. And I know how hard and how much work that is to take on a dairy farm. But I also know that it's very hard to overcome your own pride mm -hmm. and your own thoughts of anxiety and, and lack of self-worth in order to say, I need help. Farmers and those in the rural communities are very proud people. No one wants to admit the fact that right now, since, 2020, since 2000 to 2020, we have seen a 46% increase in suicides in our rural areas. Mm. We have well over three quarters of our rural areas don't have good enough broadband use for people to even get help via telemed. You have to park in your pickup on a pasture to get enough cellular phone signal to try oh to reach a, a mental health counselor because you live a hundred miles away from your nearest medical center or 
more. If you're in the state of Montana, it's further. And so people are struggling. They don't have psychiatric nurses and doctors close by that can help them if they don't feel well. They can't just drop everything in the middle of calving or harvest and dash off for help from a professional. And so what we are trying to do as a network of people within the rural communities is help others find out what's going on with each other, offer solutions. We're not professionals, but if I can offer a suggestion, a solution, a resource, I can help someone get the help that they need because they just didn't know where to turn. And mm-hmm. Dennis, you and I are people who read a lot. We are mm-hmm. fairly well educated. We probably know where a number of those resources are, but many people don't and they're scared to mm-hmm. ask. So it's up to us to be the ones to help them find that answer. Mm-hmm. Bridget, how as a nation did we get to this point that the the bedrock of our economy, the farmer, is going through such terrible times? You know, it, and it's not all financial, but let me paint oh. this picture for you. If you are part of the less than 2% of the population that still feeds the world because you're actively farming, and you're one of, let's say, four siblings, And you're the only one who still stays on the farm, but everybody else comes back and says, well, what are you doing? How are you, how are you keeping this farm together? Because you have to uphold that legacy of being the fifth or sixth generation farmer. That's a lot of stress on someone to not do anything wrong. Meanwhile, you're trying to have a family. You're trying to participate in your community. The weather works against you. We've have. 40% of the U.S. has been in a severe drought in the last six months, and it's not stopping now in western Kansas, western Nebraska, panhandle of Oklahoma and Texas. There are people there who literally cry for rain as well as pray Mm -hmm. every day. And so you have to see selling off your livestock. You see commodity prices that have gone up and down, whether it's the price of corn or wheat, but then your input costs for fertilizer and equipment have been high. And the financial strain is not only on the farmer, but his banker, his equipment dealer, his pastor. There's so many of us in the rural area that need to rely on each other to try to feel better. And it's not easy to ask for that help. When when you're relying on one another in the farming community, in the ag community, and you look down and you see a younger generation that's looking up to the adults and to the older farmers, experienced farmers. Um, What hope does the younger generation have? I have a lot of hope because they understand mental health and how to deal with it better than those who are my age of near 50 Mm -hmm. ever did. I mentioned that I'm a dairy farmer's daughter. In the late 1980s, there was a severe drought in North Dakota, and I was 15 years old at the time that my dad decided to sell the dairy cows. And I remember the day the cows left. Had I known the words to say that my dad was depressed, I would have used them. But I didn't know those words. A 15-year-old today would know that. What I noticed was that as the oldest of four, my mom went to work in town, and my dad wasn't milking twice a day. He still had cattle to feed and a crop to plant, Mm -hmm. but milking wasn't happening. So my dad did the laundry. And he did a lot of laundry, Dennis, for four kids. (laughs) Oh, I bet he did. (laughs) But that was my dad's way of coping with what yeah. was happening around him. Yeah. So I, when I speak to groups, and I've been very, very fortunate to do that through many channels, when I speak to groups, I always want to ask, who's doing your laundry? Who's suffering that you don't realize it? And please reach out to them. Mm-hmm. You know, this, is a, a, this issue is a true passion for you. You mentioned your friend and the uh, discussion that you had with her that you realized you didn't really know where she was. This right. passion, this passion though goes beyond anecdotal, um, experience. Uh, you do have, uh, a viewpoint, an op, um, an observation point where you're seeing this happen all around you. Um, how does that passion, how does that passion drive you into communicating to a larger audience? We are seeing groups like ag retailers, ag lenders, Grain merchandisers reaching out and saying, I see the fear and the stress in my farmers. Mm. How can I help them? When I see that someone wants a solution, I very much want to be able to help bring that to them. So I have prepared Mm. slides, information. I have the list of resources where we can go. I just recently was certified as a medical health, excuse me, as a mental health first aid responder. And I intend to go further with training because 
I'm not a professional. I do not have a doctorate in any of the behavioral sciences. But what I do want to do is offer solutions to others so they can find the help they need. And it's very hard. As I said, the rural communities are incredibly proud group of people. I had a woman who is completing her do- degree in sociology um, ask me one day, how do I start my practice in my smaller community in Southern Minnesota? Because farmers don't want to pull up in their pickup and somebody else sees their vehicle and then knows that they came for help. How yes. do I help them when they're afraid? How did you answer her? What did you say? We talked about a lot of options. Um, from meeting them in other places. I, I've, I know a chiropractor in Iowa who actually goes to the field to do adjustments for his customers. I said, perhaps you are literally making house calls. You can mm-hmm. ride in a buddy seat in the field. Mm-hmm. We talked about how she can do that through telemed when people are actually able to get their good phone service yeah. and the different times of the year where de- their workload and their stress may be more of a balance where mm-hmm. she can get to spend some time with them. Unfortunately, when our workload is highest, our stress, our anxiety, and our depression are the highest as well. And that's probably the time to make some house calls, if you will, to try to help. Well, as uh, we talked about uh, earlier, uh, I have the honor of being your business coach. And as you know, I only coach coaches. That's my <laughs> business. That's the model of how I can see things change bigger than just the sphere of people that I have. And so for you, um, you are a coach and you are in fact coaching them in many ways that will expand under this new opportunity. Now, your, your associations in the ag industry are calling on you to speak. Tell us about that. I have been so fortunate. Whether it's through our extension service with North Dakota State University, local farm bureaus, National Cattlemen's Beef Association, as well as their state cattlemen's associations. I have had the opportunity to get in front of folks who not only farm row crop, grain, beef. Uh, I've got some things uh, cooking where I get a chance to visit with pork producers, et cetera, because it's every commodity. It's all those who are involved in every aspect of agriculture. And I am so thrilled to be able to help with that message. I'm not sure if you saw the light bulb go off above my head when you said I'm a coach, because honestly, I've never thought of it that way, Dennis. I'm chatty, but now that you say it, I maybe am helping coach folks as they find their their resources and their safety net. You are a coach. And, and you have a coach's heart for people. You have a passionate heart of a woman who loves God, who loves fellow man. In fact, one of the things that I, I loved getting to know you about is the fact that your faith does run deep. Now, you're not the one who's going to be on the street corner with a sign. Not neither am I. Yet you are the one who, when things are breaking down in someone's family, you're bringing the casserole. You're finding out what you can do to help with the kids or the grandkids. Yeah. And, and I th- and I think in a real way that becomes a huge part of helping with mental health. People have a release. Oh, Bridget, thank you for being here. Uh, and and as you coach and teach others to do the same, to follow you, as in a sense you follow Christ. All of a sudden. The doors open up and people are willing to talk in ways that they hadn't previously. Oh, that is so true, Dennis. That is one of the small things that we can do for others. When you can see that there is a struggle, that simpleness of showing up to help. You know what? Can I help you feed your calves today? Would you mind if I, I'm, I here I am and I brought you supper tonight to help your family have a night together. Yeah. Those things matter when folks are feeling overwhelmed because overwhelmed leads to the depression and the anxiety that they suffer from. Yeah, it absolutely does. Well, Bridget, um, you know, th- tell us about your family. Tell us about your husband, your kiddos. Tell us about what gives you great joy as you're immersed in the ag business and yet you come home and you have this incredible deal where you're not in the studio, you're not on the stage, you're not on YouTube, you're just in life. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a fabulous husband, Randy. We've been married for 20 years and he also is in agriculture. So there was a time in our lives where I was on the road as a sales rep. He was running a retail fertilizer chem seed operation 
And there were moments where we literally looked at each other and said, so who's going to feed the kids today? Someone's going to do that for us, right? And so we got grace from other folks who reached out and helped us during spring season or something like that that was pretty chaotic. Those two kids have grown up. We now have two adult children who are mostly off the payroll, a uh, son and daughter-in-law. <laughs> and our, our daughter and her fiance, are, they're getting married in a year from now. And oh, so things fantastic. are coming together. I know that so many families worry about what happens when the kids leave. Guys, this empty nesting thing is fun. Look forward to it. <laughs> Nobody needs a nap. They meet the height requirement at Disney World. It's great. <laughs> Bridget, you make me laugh, and I appreciate the joy in your life. I appreciate the opportunity to to ha- to see how you're pouring into. It. Now, your kiddos, they say this is mom. She doesn't always make us laugh. What do you say to them about the future in farming that that you would like to see them, or maybe encourage them if they see a future in farming? So it's a little bit bigger than that. I am so fortunate that when I got married, I got two kids in the deal. And so my children are actually my stepchildren. They don't have to like me. I could just be dad's wife, but I'm incredibly lucky and grateful that they like me and they treat me as their mom. Mm -hmm. Whatever they choose to do, they've all watched, they've both watched my husband and I very, very busy, hectic, successful lives in ag. Neither one of them chose to do it at this point, but they picked up the, I'd like to garden. I would Mm. like to, I'd like to go to the farm where my brothers still manage our family farm. They have the innate desire to still learn and be a part of it. They may not work there, but they still have their hands tied to it as well. Well, Bridget Rito, what an honor to have you on uh, our show today, our podcast, this episode. And, uh, you know, as we come in for a landing, what, what final words, what summary would you like to leave uh, the listeners with regarding the mental health issue, both inside ag and outside ag? As those are consumers who are worried about the folks who produce your food, know that you have the cheapest, safest, and most abundant food supply in the world. And when you hear your congressional leaders talk about U.S. Department of Agriculture spending money on mental health and farm stress, please vote in favor of those things because those people want to be in good health as they continue to produce a quality product for you. Mm, That's sound wisdom. Good thoughts. Well, Bridget Rito, we appreciate you. And if people want to follow you on uh, your website, on your shows, where can they watch you? You can find me at lilaclanemedia.com. Com. Also, I'm very active on social media where on Twitter I use BM Riedel as my Twitter handle. Everywhere else you can just find Bridget Riedel. That's great. Bridget, thanks for being with us. Thank you for the invite. This has been fabulous. Uh, it's a great word because it's one that matches the way you live your life. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for listening to Just Around the Corner with Dennis Mansfield. We're part of the KTSY Podcast Network. And as such, I'd like to thank Brian Yeager, producer Grady Sapp, Kevin McNeese, and all the fine folks who are part of bringing this podcast to you. As such as well, I'd like to thank Colin Mansfield and Kevin Miller in the morning. What a team that I get to work with. (laughs) 